Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette and I'm so glad you're here with us today with Mr. Winston Scott. Hello, one of our favorite astronauts, spacewalker. I always love saying that because that was dangerous stuff. Welcome, Winston, to Stay Curious. Mark, it's great being here with you. Last time I did this, I think it was Zoom, wasn't it? Yes, it was we did. Being here in the studio. With yeah, we time. did. And yeah, uh, uh, well, you're a very busy man on the Space Coast, but we're going to talk yeah, about how you're sure. getting to put the brakes on a little bit. Uh, and uh, he is the chief astronaut out at the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex, not Johnson Space Center, which is a whole <laughs> different chief astronaut. That's a whole different chief astronaut, there. right. But a great friend of our museum, and if you've met Winston Scott, you know what a terrific personality he is and how he always given back to the community. Like you were today, Winston, what were you doing at our American Space Museum? I'll tell you what, I was having a ball, but what I was doing uh, physically was actually talking to a group of high school students who are visiting from Japan. And I tell you, it was really fun thing having them here. Earlier in the day, as I understand it, they visited the university, so they were down at Florida Tech, and I think they're going to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex either today or tomorrow. But they were here this afternoon, and they allowed me to give them a presentation about my experiences in space, and specifically about my uh, flying in space with a couple of Japanese astronauts which they certainly related to. So That's again, right. talking to students was a... Uh, we got a rookie Japanese yeah. astronaut going yeah. to space August 21st, yeah. Fukawa. Yes, yes, yes. Name? Uh, I, 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 <laughs> the best I can do. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, well, let's just get into it. Winston, I just got to say thank you for all that you've done for the American Space thank Museum, you. but the, the Space Coast in general, you and your wife, Marilyn, are always involved in events. I know that can be kind of uh, uh, a list that you have a hard time choosing yeah. from uh, without making other yeah. people uh, a little bit... Uh, left out let's put it that way but you seem to handle it well my friend and and i and i love calling you my friend thank you i appreciate it but uh, uh being a part of living in a community to us means that you're actually a part of the community we're very fortunate that people ask us to be involved and when people ask you to be involved then we try and accommodate we we want to give back, as they say, to the community as much as possible. Very important. Well, we're going to see a couple yeah. things where he's giving back, uh, not just with his trumpet playing as he's a master at, but some twinkle toes, I understand, <laughs> who are involved there. But uh, we want to thank Delaware North and, of course, the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex for their financial contribution to our Stay Curious program a little bit ago. The Gateway in that picture has just been a big hit hasn't it absolutely i was in gateway i guess a week ago conducting a tour i'll tell you it's a fantastic place for those who haven't been you've got to come visit ksc visitor complex and specifically see gateway right yeah real stuff that is actually flown in space it is and yeah, we have absolutely. the al kohler virtual map that yes. is on the wall in yes. there that was quite a, a thing i love that map that map yeah. is full and great and for those who don't know dr kohler was a great uh educational specialist and engineer here on the space Coast. I haven't seen uh, Al Kohler in a while. So. He's around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Al and yeah, White, they're doing good. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, great guy. Uh, yeah, he's on our board still. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah we sure. love you, Dr. Al. I'm sure he'll be Absolutely, watching today. Yeah. And we love the K Visitors Complex. Uh, we'll get, get into that a little bit more. They do so many good things. Uh, they're always changing things. Yes, yes. I went into the Mars mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, display mm -hmm. for the first time in six months, and they've changed it. They yeah. took out the big heat shield yeah. of Orion yeah. that had Apollo, Gemini, and Mercury on it, and yes. they have the sky crane and lander of, of curiosity yeah. there. It's just gorgeous. I haven't been in the Mars exhibit myself in a while, so I need to check that out. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I did uh, check out, and it took me back to my childhood. They have a puppet show which is snoopy and charlie brown okay and they're full size uh puppets marionettes and there's a theme to it with snoopy and charlie brown okay so kids of all ages will certainly enjoy that a live show with the with the full-size puppets we have yeah. formally said hi to marty my co-producer on over 860 episodes of stay curious marty did you see the puppet show yet i sure did and i felt like a child i mean it was really good <laughs> it's a pleasure really Absolutely. Right. Well, thank you, Marty. Uh, uh, his Google's talking uh, back during there. Well, we do. Uh, I am always amazed, uh, proud to buy a season ticket. It's the best thing you can buy around here if you're a space geek. Absolutely. Because uh, parking's free. Yes. And and uh, but they're always pressure washing, painting, cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, am I right, Winston? Mm -hmm. Everybody's going around. Right. Yeah, and it looks absolutely. like that new Starbucks is a big hit. Starbucks is a big hit. Just opened, I guess, a few weeks ago. Opened mm -hmm. up. So, yeah, Starbucks is available. As well as other restaurants. So when people come to visit, 
They can have lunch if they want to. You can have lunch with an astronaut. Or you can have lunch on your own or snacks throughout the various snack places, buy coffee or uh, just, just mm -hmm. a great place to visit. Well, uh, we are enjoying a conversation with Winston Scott. You're going to enjoy some of the things about his life that we're going to share with you and what he's up to now doing. Of course, a, a, a three-time space walker. Uh, we enjoy hearing the space walk stories. Um, and uh, John Harrington has a very oh, unusual yeah. one yeah. where uh, uh, he had to clean his faceplate ah. with his tongue because <laughs> something came on there. But... Uh, uh, it, this is, uh, and now uh, Kathy Thornton, who's having a birthday yes. August 17th, by the way, when she's out uh, at the Space Center. I'm glad I'll remind you, you of that. that. I, remind uh, you. I, I did not know uh, that. She said this is the hardest, uh -huh. most grueling, it is. physically yes. demanding yeah. job on anything, mm -hmm. the, the, the Sphinx mm -hmm. in there. It is. That suit, of course, is, uh, is very, very big and bulky. It weighs over 300 pounds on Earth. And even though it's weightless in space, you still have that mass that you're moving around in space, mm -hmm. in addition to your body mass and your tools and so on. And the suit's pressurized, so it resists every movement you're making. So from a physical standpoint, yeah, this is the toughest thing that we do in space. Burning up all those calories. I hope NASA is giving you a, a, a stipend to eat on. Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> am I right, dude? You probably ate more. Well, you, you do. Uh, they don't give you a financial stipend, but they give you more calories. You know, uh, the People don't don't realize this, but we have professional dietitians on staff at Johnson Space Center that not only prepare our food, but they help us prepare our menus. And part of what they look at is your daily activities. So on the day that I had a spacewalk, oh. they actually packed me with more calories and more carbs hmm. to get you through that grueling day because you don't get to eat in the suit. You have breakfast, uh -huh. and then you have dinner later on the end of the, the spacewalk, but the entire day is taken up with space walking activities. And I tell you, you deplete a lot of energy and a lot of calories uh, conducting a space walk. Well, that's something that made yeah. me stay curious. You're like a hamster in a cage as you're watching your every move and knowing you're what, your every what you're doing. Absolutely. Comment on our UCAC microphone, Marty. Yeah, from Doug Forrest. He says, during the time period of the first shuttle attempt for Artemis last year, we got to ride the space shuttle simulator at the visitor center with Winston. We all felt very safe with the professional with us. And Winston, that's the, the uh, picture you signed for me. Okay. Was, was the, yes, the, yes, the pistol droid, right? Yeah, he just signed your uh, endeavor. Uh -huh. That you flew in there. Absolutely. I saw Doug's name at the bottom. Of that drawing is absolutely incredible. A very talented individual. That That's is amazing. quite cool, the, the, yes. the, uh, ro the astronaut experience. Right? It is, the shuttle launch experience. Yeah. Shuttle launch experience, and for those who are in the audience who haven't visited, you've got to do it. You feel as though you are riding on a real rocket launch. It inclines you in your seat, it shakes and vibrates, and, and then it'll give you a push in the back, and you feel as though you're launching. And uh, some eight minutes later, you arrive in orbit, and the uh, payload mm -hmm. bay doors will open up. Mm -hmm. It tilts down, so you feel as though you you begin to feel weightless. So it's, it's an absolutely great simulation hmm. of a real space launch. All right, so I've done, done it twice. Been in that thrust bucket twice. <laughs> is yes, it, indeed. Uh, uh, the space. Heck, one more shot of you. Uh, beautiful shot there. Uh, did you do your three spacewalks? Did Did any of them ever happen? As you were looking over your home of Miami. Grew I, up in Miami. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Absolutely. I certainly do remember looking out of the window and seeing Miami, actually seeing the entire uh, state of Florida, as we see in the picture here. I don't remember looking down at the earth and seeing Miami during a spacewalk. Spacewalks are so busy. Mm -hmm. But I do remember looking out of the shuttle and seeing uh, this view and other similar views. So, yeah, spacewalk's a pretty busy time, and I did uh, venture a glance over the side occasionally, but uh, didn't see that specific view from outside. A gorgeous shot there. It is. That's uh, a gorgeous shot. Uh, and and uh, I see my house. Oh, do you see your house down there? <laughs> well, you stay busy today with a lot of outreach. Uh, I've tagged along a couple of events you've done with kids. This is a outreach you did last year with the Boys and Girls Club wow. nearby here. Yes, yes. There. Uh -huh. uh, and uh -huh. uh, uh, sometimes uh, an astronaut has to tell kids to pay attention. Absolutely. Okay. Because <laughs> they don't all really appreciate moving uh, in front of you all the time. Well, they really get so excited. They really are very, very excited. Uh -huh. They were good kids. I remember that day. It was a, it was a fun presentation. Yes, and uh, 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 Ron Becker, the lady on the left, mm -hmm. did the that space did the book. book. That's right. It was exactly. read in on the, on the space station yes. recently. Uh -huh. Okay, in there. But uh -huh. uh, and there you were today with the group of Japanese. Yes, yes. Uh, uh -huh. 
moved that picture off there in our mm -hmm. conference room there. Uh -huh. uh, we're grateful to Florida, Japan. They, for years, have brought regularly, like four times a year, groups they here. Yes. We, they really suffered during the COVID yes. when that was shut down. Yeah. But um, uh, did they, uh, uh, how many, did, would you, what message did you want to carry to them? Well, I wanted to carry a message to them the, the same as I carry to any group of kids, no matter where they're from, is that uh, there's so many exciting things to do in life. Uh, astronaut is one of them, but there's so many other things that they do. And first of all, I wanted them to, uh, to understand that they can decide what they want to do. Flying in space is not for everybody. Some may want to be teachers or doctors or whatever. They do decide what they want to do. But if they persevere, if they work hard, they get a good education, then they can accomplish mm -hmm. those goals just as I was fortunate enough to accomplish my goals. They were a great audience. I thoroughly in, enjoyed them. And uh, uh, Florida Space Group, uh, they, they do a real good job. They uh, do. They sure they, do. Yeah, they do. So uh, yeah, Japan, Florida. Japan, Florida. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah great, does a good job. Yeah, 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 Minori and uh, yeah. Ab absolutely, and right. uh, uh, they've like I said, they've been a mainstay here for many years with our executive director Karen mm -hmm. Conklin. Mm -hmm. yeah, Wanted to show you a little bit about the Delaware North. There, we this is outside the Universe Theater there, uh, and uh, uh, the an astronaut every day yes. is promised to be out there, uh, and I've been out there on Easter. And I've not been out there on Christmas. You're closed Christmas, I think. We're closed on Christmas. Right. That's right. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, we enjoy. Uh, uh, there is a Guy Gardner. All right. Yeah, Boy, yeah, if you yeah. ever get a chance to see Guy Gardner, <laughs> all right. You know what he's doing there, Winston? He, oh, he's doing that, that's, oh, that's specific. Yeah, that, that right. guy. Uh -huh. And he's asking for adjectives. Oh, he, okay. he was a teacher, uh -huh. college teacher, uh -huh. and he says, "Give me an adjective about going to space." Uh -huh. And Tom will say, "Brave" or or uh -huh. something like that. And so then I remember uh, what the, what the yeah. definition of the word "adjective" that part of speech. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he's he's always mm -hmm. he's very involved there. Right. And then getting the astronaut autographs. There's our friend Mike yeah, Baker. Mike Baker. Uh -huh. uh, we've got an interview with Mike in the can that we're going to show on mm -hmm. a Monday or Friday mm -hmm. to give me a day off. Uh, Nick Thomas is over there on the right. Uh, yeah, the people Christian. love this. Uh, You've been part of this, okay? Uh, what do you find about the the reaction of people all over the world, right? Well, I tell there's you, Marty what. and me. Yeah, yeah right. Right. We, we, we love being do. there, standing absolutely. in line. Uh, we'll get to that there in a second. There, people abs absolutely love it. One of the uh, highlights of visiting Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center is that there is an astronaut on center every day that the center is open, and it's open, like I say, 364 days a year or whatever and there are multiple opportunities for visitors to interact with that astronaut we have programs presentations in the large auditorium some more intimate setting the chat with an astronaut where they get to they'll, they'll eat but it's uh, like a almost like a fireside chat where you mm -hmm. roll up close and that's a little extra with the, your uh, daily tick little there. extra daily tick but you get the meal with it and you uh -huh. get the personal touch a very small group and then there are autograph sessions uh, in the bookstores and there are photograph sessions uh, just multiple opportunities on it's you get really day. for the astronauts yeah, it's, it's, it's mean, a little busy for fun. them but, uh, but we enjoy it yeah, yeah. at 11 o'clock is an uh, astronaut talk at that theater and then at uh, uh, 3 yeah. Mm -hmm. No, 3.15, 11 and 3.15. Yes, 3.15. And the autograph session at noon at the gift shop. And then and I like sure. seeing, the, when I can, the 4 o'clock at yes. the, Atlantis because yes. I get to stare at uh, Atlantis uh, in line. Yeah, there's another autograph session at Atlantis, autograph and photographs at Atlantis. Yeah. But at 10 a.m. is chat with. And again, like you said, that's a little bit extra on the on the ticket, but it's a very intimate setting. You get breakfast there and you get the intimate uh time with the astronaut so so many things to do out there. i'm gonna have a sip of my stay curious coffee here winston uh mike leinbach is also yeah. a great addition who launched the last 37 absolutely shows. yes the director's yeah. tour is worth every penny of it yeah. thank you marty for my birthday present last year yeah. he gave me the director's tour mike does do a great job and uh what people may not remember we, we kind of know it <laughs> academically but we need to remember there's so many people doing important and exciting things, sort of quote unquote behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And it's folks like Mike Line Mike Leinbach that actually make the determination whether we're gonna launch, whether we're gonna hold or whether we actually launch us into space. So Mike has some really interesting uh, stories to tell about his career in the space program. We all owe a lot to Mike in yeah, terms of making the program uh, work. <laughs> 
He wrote yeah. a definitive book on Columbia, Absolutely. bringing Columbia home mm -hmm. with our friend Jonathan Ward, and he doesn't shy mm -hmm. talking about it yeah. 20 years later yeah. uh, in a, yeah. in a uh, uh, reverent, mm -hmm. uh, you know, correct manner mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. But, yes. uh, yeah, Mike uh, is a great friend of our museum also mm -hmm. there. We want to just, uh, like, uh, Winston, there's the, uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, where you grew up and, uh, there you are as a Top Gun Navy yeah. with a nickname Slick. <laughs> yeah, actually, was, I'm a native Floridian, born and raised in Miami, Miami, Florida, Coral Gables High School, and uh, finished uh, uh, Florida State University, go Knowles, had to get that in there. Yeah. And uh, 27 years on active duty, of course, as a naval aviator. The first 20 was at, with the Navy. The last seven were with NASA. That picture was as I was a production test pilot in Jacksonville, and I was pre-flagging A-7. A-7 was a carrier-based light attack aircraft. And I think I'm going to do a production test flight on this airplane here. I'm mm -hmm. doing a pre-flight. I can't remember exactly why that picture was taken, but uh, it goes back a few years. And you're an uh, astronaut. A lot of pictures crop up. You uh, find uh, all the yeah, exactly. That people took before uh, there. And, uh, of course, that, the one on the right is my official NASA portrait mm -hmm. taken in the EMU, Lake Subica Mobility Unit there at Johnson Space Center. Uh, well, you had no idea that you were going to pursue this education in Coral Gables. And, uh, 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 of course, uh, Winston, uh, you, like me, a baby boomer, part of the civil rights movement yes. of the 1960s. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, how you share that. With well, it's uh, interesting. Uh, I attended segregated schools up through ninth grade. And uh, now the decision to desegregate Brown versus Board of Education was way back in 1954. But schools in Miami didn't actually integrate until 10, 12 years later. And a lot of people in the audience think segregation was way, way, way long ago. But it wasn't all that long ago because my schools were segregated. We integrated in uh, my 10th grade year. And those of us in my predominantly black neighborhood transferred over to historically white Coral Gables High School. And uh, it was there at Coral Gables that I got involved in the band program. Coral Gables had an outstanding band program. And because of my musical ability, my band director made a personal phone call to the dean of the College of Music at Florida State University. I was accepted as a music student at FSU and went to school to study music. While I was at FSU, college did what it's supposed to do broaden my horizons. I started taking math and science and engineering courses in addition to my music courses. Finished uh, college, went to the Navy. The Navy sent me back to school to finish my engineering degree and so on and so forth. So I actually have an academic degree in music and an academic degree in engineering mm -hmm. and a Navy career and then NASA career and so on. So kind of an interesting uh, you had Miles Davis started. on your mind. Absolutely. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, and, uh, uh, we were, we, I love jazz. We were talking yeah. about some jazz. Uh, you have said that if you want to know what a spacewalk is like, <laughs> what should we listen to? In a Silent Way by Miles Davis. Yeah. yeah. I have done that many times yeah. since you said that. The, the choir, that. It doesn't sound like space. It, well, I've never been in space. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you know, that, that's what Hardy would say. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm imagining well, it. Has, Winston it, says, uh, it has a silent Oh, it has a kind of a beautiful, peaceful, pretty sound. Yeah, it does. The slow part before it goes into the rock. With yeah, the, the yeah. ending beat. Type yeah, of, that, that's I figured that your heart beating is yeah. something that you're trying to grapple that satellite up there. But the initial part of this, nice and, and soft yeah. and quiet, in the inner silent way part. The second part is called It's About Time, but in a silent way, just nice. So, anybody in the audience, you're going to pull it up on. Uh, the internet and listen to a little bit of In a Silent Way by Miles Davis. Uh, are there cool. are, are your recordings on the internet? Do you have yeah. a, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm embarrassed to say I've not Googled they, that. There are about there are a few CD in the car. I do have CD in the car, as a matter of fact, a couple of but there are some recordings of me playing. I don't know if it's any of my original stuff because I directed the advanced jazz ensemble at Florida Tech. For a number of years, they can pull up the pull up the Florida Tech Jazz Syndicate. Okay. The nickname was the Jazz Syndicate, but it was actually a four credit course for uh, students at Florida Tech. For those and you can listen to some of us play. So those of you musically yeah. inclined out there, how would you call your style of trumpet playing? I, it's it's probably if I had to to uh, relate it to a particular individual, it's probably Miles Davis, and maybe some Freddie Hubbard. I like. I really like straight ahead, 
does. I like bebop. I like the hard driving, mm -hmm. straight ahead stuff as opposed to smooth jazz. I don't care for that much. So Freddie Hubbard, Art Blake, and the Jazz Messengers and the trumpet players associated with them. But Miles Davis is my mm, favorite. Art Blake. Whit, I look Whit at Marsalis, of course, is am amazing. Probably the number one jazz trumpeter today. He does a lot of New Orleans style. He does everything else. The guy's amazing. But a lot of New Orleans style. I like New Orleans style too. But I'm more of a Miles Davis, uh, Freddie Hubbard kind of a uh, jazz style, I think. Okay. Yeah. Like Clifford so, Brown, some Clifford Brown in there right. also, and uh, a whole bunch of others. Yeah. Well, I uh, loved my rock and roll for a long time, and I've always, I got turned on to jazz kind of early by some musicians yeah. and people. I uh, actually saw, uh, um, oh, who's the guy that played three saxophones at once? I saw him in concert. I remember Cannonball. Oh, uh, Roland Kirk. Yeah, Roshan Roland, Roland, Roland Kirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw that cat play yeah. that the time there. That's uh, we digress here away from Winston <laughs> Scott talking about jazz uh, 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 and uh, a, a person that uh, you're a Renaissance man. Okay, oh, okay. without a doubt, you're a Renaissance okay. man uh, uh, in a uh, in the 21st century. Here, this book I want to talk about a little bit. Reflections. Uh, Marty and I, we've read a lot of books. Marty's read more books than me. 120 pages, and I, I've read 300, 400 page tombs, tomes of astronauts. And you know Winston Scott after you read this book. But what, Winston, I'm going to surprise you here. What I'd like for you to tell us about is your dream. The dream oh, yeah. you had. Yeah. And this is an amazing story. And the dream you had as yeah, you're it, told in this book. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. When I grew up in uh, gang in Miami in the, the segregated school system and so on, we didn't have uh, uh, people to come and talk to us, mentors to tell us about flying and flying. I never thought I would fly in space or flying in a place else. I was always fascinated by flight, airplanes and airplane movies and TV. I never thought I would do it. But anyway, I, I did have I have a, a dream. I worry about it in the book. And in this dream, I'm standing outside my house. Uh, as a kid in Miami, and uh, it's a bright, bright, sunny day. I can remember the green of the trees and the bright sunshine and so on. And all of a sudden in this dream, I just sort of rose up off the ground, and I began to fly. And I rose up to the roof line of the house, and then I began to fly forward towards the front of the house. And I remember in the dream, I, I wanted to go higher and wanted to go faster but I didn't. I didn't have as much control over myself as I wanted to. So I flew for a little while and then um, remark, re remarked at the colors that I saw. And then all of a sudden I woke up. And then many, many, many years later, as I recount that dream as an astronaut, I think that dream might have been a premonition for what I was going to do later on in life as, as to fly in space. So it's just a really uh, yeah. interesting phenomenon. And, and yeah. Has it ever reoccurred no. to you? Uh, no, uh, I never had that. that particular did you ever think about end. that when you were in space nope. in there? Is nope. after when you write this? Book? It was only at that time I was writing uh, the book that what, what, uh, that came to me. You you describe mm -hmm. your spacewalking in that context mm -hmm. of the of the colors are so brilliant you can't yes. believe. Yes, uh, uh, and and I've always heard you astronauts right. say. The black that you see here is no comparison to the black of space. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and in there, but mm -hmm. what Winston does in this book mm -hmm. is he takes you on a space shuttle flight, launch and landing, in a way that's just very, to me, very uh, artistic. Uh, you you don't talk about things very technical. Yet you're up in the cabin uh -huh. on your first flight yes, yes, and uh -huh. doing some checkoff yep. things. Yep. And uh -huh. uh, we yeah. met your uh, uh, your commander. Uh, Brian, Duffy Brian Duffy the other the, day, and, right, and, and, uh, and he uh, said you were a good, you were a good student. You're good <laughs> in there. Brian uh, seemed to be a person that lets uh, everybody be who they are, but he had a. Brian was. A, I had two great commanders, but Brian, my first commander, so I was a rookie on the flight. And Brian was very, very good, very patient with you on your mm -hmm. your first time around. So you study, you learn, you practice, you you do some goof ups here and there too. Yeah. But Brian was really a a good mentor, a good uh, you, just a good commander. You write in the yeah. book that when you got to space, you started opening up. Everything started, all my stuff started floating all over. <laughs> you thought you were going to get blessed yeah. out Brian, right? I just got into orbit, and Brian and my helmet flies one way, my gloves fly another way. And Brian turns around from the command seat and looks at me, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, boy, I've been in space for all the 30 seconds, and I'm going to get chewed out. <laughs> he makes this big grin, and he says, welcome to zero G. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I, I, just a good guy. Yes, uh, yeah. awesome good guys. Yeah, These commanders good. and pilots are, yeah. as I meet more of them, they're a different breed of cat, for uh, sure. Uh, good in, people. In, in, in a very good way mm -hmm. yes. in there. Um, well, a couple of I know this Mr. Ledoux. I hope you all have a Mr. Ledoux in yeah. your life because uh, life is full of crossroads. And uh, that was the gentleman that picked up the phone for you yes. and changed your life. Changed my life. Yeah, Eddie, yeah, I made that phone call. Uh, and uh, the, let me, before I go, uh, we'll get a little more in this uh -huh. book here in just a second. There as I was getting, uh, wanted to mention that, you know, you do a lot. You've been our speaker at our Astronaut Memorial Foundation. Uh, yes. The uh, memorial we have in January in there, very important to remember our fallen heroes back then. Uh, but... Uh, you got to, you were involved with the uh, Dancing with the Space Coast Stars. Yes. Uh, last, a couple months, or June 3rd, yeah, huh? June, that's right. Uh, Thank you, Joan uh, Hodges, for tipping me off to that at lunch today. Yeah, this is the uh, largest fundraiser uh, Brevard County holds every year. And this year, one of the organizations that benefited was the Astronaut Memorial Foundation. So, uh, uh, Thad Altman up there asked me if I would dance in this event and represent AML. I said, Thad, I, you, you got the wrong person. Said, My wife is the dancer in the family. But as I thought about it, there's no way I could turn this down. It was a, it, it's certainly a worthwhile cause. And uh, there no really not very other, many other astronauts in the local area. So I agreed to do it, and uh, they paired me with a professional dancer, of course. And uh, she was my partner and instructor. And we put together a dance act, and we we came in second in the overall contest. There were six contestants. I was there. He is, too. folks, looking good there. Well, we raised over God. yeah, we raised over eighty thousand dollars for the right? uh, yeah for the uh, dancing with the space. Now, though, well, the total raise was three over three hundred thousand. Wow. But my part, we were, we raised wow. well over eighty thousand. Thad Altman over the uh, astronaut memorial foundation right. area uh, representative at our local uh, uh, absolutely uh, local house here mm -hmm. in there. But uh, did you get the Pick the outfit there. I mean, they I had did. an astronaut. Fire. I did. I picked but, the outfit. Uh, I picked, uh, and this is the outfit for the advertisement. I actually danced in a different jacket. It was a, a silver jacket from Buzz Aldrin that, that gave to me, and it says, Get your to Mars. Yeah, yeah that's still to Mars. Yeah, huh? So anyway, our theme was uh, was Fly Me to the Moon. It was okay. Frank Sinatra's Fly Me to the Moon, and we did a dance that, that had a little bit of moon. Uh, a uh, theme to it, uh -huh. to the tune of "Fly Me to the Moon" with a Count Basie big band. Oh, back. good, absolutely. Right. You look so, good uh, there, guys. Yeah. Florida, there. Yeah. To, <laughs> Marty's got a question or comment. Yeah, yeah Winston, who beat you? Uh, a guy from the fire department. The the person that represented the county, fire and police and all of that. Yeah, he. And I don't remember what his uh, amount total amount raised, but that's who that was who was the number one contestant. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that Dancing with the Stars, a national TV show that, that then adopted in communities to raise money yes. and so forth. Yes. And, and uh, there's a lot of dancers out there that, dancers. That, love to, that love to dance. In it's there. a funny, but I'm going to tell you, it's a lot, a lot of work. You think walking in space is work? Oh, we're yeah. really trying to learn ballroom dancing. And what we did was a modification of the foxtrot. I don't know a foxtrot in my life. Yeah. So they had to teach me. They taught me from, from step one, you know, and uh, we worked on it and practiced. And, uh, well, uh, let, I had sore feet. Uh, Did you? I mean, soaked my feet Let's equate that. Story Musgrave, uh, of course, in the important uh, Hubble EVA, yeah. said he had yes. to, uh, we had to figure out where to put our hands and feet just like a ballerina. Yeah. I'd and it's just how did. you trained on your. <laughs> Did you feel that? Yes, absolutely. Now, we course, you did face walk out there. was no training for yeah, you. That, that, uh, about. That's right. But uh, in terms of the dance, yes, we had to start out, okay, do this. Step one here and step two. Then they demonstrate how we're following and mm -hmm. imitate. And then we practice. And pretty soon it gets fluid. And we put the whole, the entire act together and uh, came out really, really hmm. pretty well. Compared yeah. to the neutral buoyancy lab, <laughs> is it, it's, it's hard to work. It's right? different. It's hard to work, all it's right. different work. Absolutely. Right. All right, we're enjoying uh, Winston Scott here. Let's. Uh, there's your wife, uh, wife Marilyn. Marilyn. And yeah, uh, help uh, put her up. I met yeah, her several uh, times. Last uh, time was at the uh, Yuri's Night. That's uh, right. In yeah, April like there. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did you think about that Yuri's Night event? Ah, uh, Yuri's Night was a funny event. But I tell you, it was uh, it was so so many people. I was all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I enjoyed. It's, it's like really. Comic -Con. I was going to say it's really more like Comic Con yeah. than uh, anything else. But. Uh, Thoroughly enjoyed it. Met a lot of people. Took a lot of pictures. I think I enjoyed it as much as the other attendees. 
because there were uh, Star Wars stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. Got to take pictures with the stormtroopers and Darth Vader who was there. And there was Captain Kirk's and uh, John Luke Picard's and Mr. Spock's and uh, Lieutenant Uhura's. So all of your uh, uh, yeah. Comic Con people were there. As uh, well, as had uh, another space yeah. flyer there. Um, the lady that flew the, uh, Proctor. Uh, yeah, Proctor was Theon there. Proctor that flew uh, with an Inspiration yeah. Four yeah. flight was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As people descended around the astronaut there, yeah, I saw yeah, your yeah. wife from Maryland mm -hmm. look around and she recognized me. Uh, oh, there's someone I can talk to <laughs> while I'm standing here. And there was talking to Winston. The Euro's Night is a is a really really fun event, uh, especially with young people. You know, it's kind of a lie. Got the rock music going and the comic. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, the costumes. Music. Yeah. The costumes. So anybody wants to attend the Euro's Night, you have a lot of fun uh, there. Winston, the only place yeah. I've seen a buffet of candy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Buffet yeah. trays of absolutely. Of, 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 uh -huh. uh, your fa your space uh -huh. favorite, of yes. course, the mm -hmm. chocolate, the coated chocolate. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. call them M and M's. That's right. That's yeah. Better. It doesn't have a little M on it, but uh, it's the and, generic uh, version. So. Uh, well, tell Marilyn hi, and uh, we always love seeing her. Uh, this is an event that you all helped us out with. Yes. Uh, 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 back in the uh, uh, before COVID. Yeah, it's been a couple of years back in now. there. And yeah. uh, but talk about this book here, and I pulled up. Uh, this uh, quote that uh, is Winston put in here, and I know it's important to your life, Winston. It is. This little poem was taught to us by Mr. Franklin Clark, my fifth and sixth grade accelerated math and English teacher back at Little Tucker, Francis mm -hmm. Tucker Elementary School. He taught us this point, had us to learn it, and it stayed with me all of uh, my life. And again, it's, it's anonymous. I could not find an author, but... Uh, but if, a there, task, there is, yeah, uh, if a task has once begun, never leave it till it's, it's done. done. Be the labor, great or small, do it well or not at all. That's what Mr. Clark taught us. And fortunately, now Mr. Clark's passed away just a few years ago, but he did see my two space launches. Oh. And uh, Mr. Clark, back again, fifth and sixth grade, introduced us to space concepts we didn't have the internet in those days but he would bring in magazine articles and newspaper articles about the space program project mercury was oh, on the wow. drawing board then he introduced us to project mercury and i went to the public library got a library called the very first book i've ever checked out of the public library in my life was project mercury so even in those days, I was fascinated by the space program mm -hmm. flight, but I didn't think I could do it. It just was so far-fetched. But Mr. Clark uh, kind of instilled, I think maybe he planted the seed in the back of my mind uh, about space flight and doing things aviation and scientific, even mm -hmm. back then in low segregated Francis S. Tucker School. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, was he a white gentleman? No, well, again, schools were segregated then. Oh, so, segregated back then. Yeah, no, okay, okay. Black well, and Ledoux, all, Mr. Ledoux was. Uh, now, when schools okay. integrated, I moved over to Coral Gables. Mr. Ledoux was my high school band director. And right. Incredibly, in, had it not been for Mr. Ledoux and his phone call, I probably would not have become an astronaut. Yeah, that that almost brings me to tears in yes. this book. Are you, yeah. uh, what would what would yeah. Winston Scott have done? Yeah. You know, what what job uh, you think you may have ended up doing? Well, now? I would have been a musician. Uh, whether I would have been a professional playing, uh, or would I have been teaching, or doing both, or a composer, who knows? But I think my life would have remained uh, as a professional musician. Oh, I think you'd be and, cutting uh, records for Columbia. Oh, uh, could if you be. And that's, uh, of course, music is a wonderful profession. I love music. I still do. But uh, I probably would not have become an astronaut. Well, we're going to talk about being an astronaut. What music did you take to space oh, with? Oh, I took a variety of music to space with. We talked about Miles Davis. I took uh, some big band music, some Count Basie, uh, Glenn Miller, Duke Ellington, and so on. I took... Uh, some rhythm and blues with me, an assortment of rhythm and blues. One of my most favorite tapes, and we took tapes in those days because you yeah, could not... Yeah, really, cassette tapes. Yeah, yeah, cassette tapes. You didn't have... A, we, we could take CDs, but you couldn't customize your CD. I could customize my tape. One of my most favorite oh, right. was actually yeah, Ray right. Charles. The late, great Ray yeah. Charles, Greatest Hits. Okay. I loved it, really enjoyed that. But, some good songs oh, on there. Oh, yeah, some good sure. stuff. Now... Because we had an international crew, we also had some Japanese music. The Cal took some music into space with us. And we had music from the Ukraine and some from uh, 
yeah, Japanese and from Ukraine and so on. Very eclectic group. Let's talk about STS-71 here as we bring the picture up there. Yes. I can tell my subtle scroll right. here, Winston, uh, that this was uh, launched January 1st, 1996. Uh, Endeavor's 10th flight. Uh -huh. Okay. And... Um, uh, Duffy was the commander, right. uh, Brett Jett, the Jet. uh, pilot, yep. mm -hmm. uh, Chow, Barry, uh, Scott, uh -huh. and Wakata. Yes. Uh -huh. And, uh, but the, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was thinking the uh, Ukrainians were on the other flight. Oh, on my second flight. That yeah, was yeah, the first good. flight going in yeah. Denver. In there. So, uh, uh, tell, so tell, you know, look at that smile on, on I, I told you before <laughs> we started talking, Dan Barry <laughs> yes. rivals you uh -huh. for smiling there. Yeah, and, and Dan and, and I, I uh, love Dan because he was a quarter uh, finalist on the Survivor oh, TV, Survivor TV show. show. Absolutely, yeah. and, and we uh, we called him Doctor Doctor Dan. Dan oh, Dan was an incredibly uh, accomplished individual. He had a PhD in electrical engineering. It was also a medical doctor. So we called him Doctor Doctor Dan. Oh, okay. Doctor Squared. <laughs> yeah, just a great guy. And uh, you're right, he was on Survivor for a while there back in uh, some years ago. And, of course, Koichi Wakata was on my, in my uh, uh, class and on my first flight. Koichi just celebrated a birthday, I guess it was yesterday. Yes, he did. He yeah. did. And, so, uh, anyway. uh, uh -huh. yeah, and I understand he's going to be on the Space Coast for the launch. Yes, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sure you're, you're going to get up with him and... I, you uh, know, I, I need to. I haven't seen. Oh, I haven't seen uh, Koichi in a while, so I'd like to. I'd like to see him. John uh, Harrington and, says uh, he's Koichi the man. Uh, we, All right. We called uh, during my first space. We we're training for our space flight. Somehow, or other Koichi got the moniker the man. <laughs> so we actually had a name tag <laughs> oh, really? made with him. It said the man, oh, okay. and the rest of us got name tags. So they said with the man. Oh, is that? <laughs> oh, that's so good. Love hearing the one you guys have. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, That's I can great. tell you another Koichi story real quick. Course. After the after the launch, I'm sorry, after the landing of this flight, the crew was invited to Japan. The Japanese government was very gracious with us. They invited us over to Japan, and we did lectures and tours and so on. Well, on one tour, we visited a place in Japan. I apologize not remember the exact spot, but there's a giant Buddha giant statue of Buddha. I mean, this thing is huge. It's out in the park in the open. So as we were all walking around, walking towards the statue of Buddha, we could hear people in the crowd whispering, Wakata-san? You mean pointing? Wakata-san? Yeah, Wakata-san. Wakata-san. And all of a sudden, it sort of catches on and people whoosh. They leave the statue of Buddha and they rush over and they start grabbing, gathering around Wakata. Wow. So I said, "Hey, we're in the presence of royalty yeah. here with the with, with the man." Yeah. Japanese <laughs> love their astronauts. <laughs> Absolutely, sure do. we yeah. do have some fun. Some fun that, times. That's yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah. He had a birthday yesterday. Sixty years old. Yeah. I think he'll go to space again. He just came back. He just came March. back. That's right. Uh, he, has, he has been on uh, three spaceships. Yeah. Shuttle, yeah. Soyuz, and the Crew Dragon. Yeah, the Crew Dragon, absolutely. No. Yeah. Oh, well, I mentioned, what do you think about that Crew Dragon? Would you hop in that and I, you for know, what you know I, about I, it? I would, yeah. I think uh, the uh, private commercial companies are doing a great job. They really are. SpaceX, of course, Boeing's coming on, Sierra Nevada. SpaceX is the leader right now, but the others are coming along. They're going to do nicely. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the opportunity came up, yeah, I'd I'd be happy to fly in one of them, especially when they're doing something new and different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been I've been to orbit, right? But if, if the, yeah. I go a little further, eh, yeah. a little further, we're going yeah. back. To, I like to go to the moon. Well, we've got a rookie That's commander, good. Jasmine Mowgli. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. Marine Ura. Mm -hmm. She's in and there. Marty's a Marine. I got to get that in for you, Navy I guys. Thought was, I thought it was a, couldn't couldn't remember if Marty was a Marine or Navy yeah. SEAL. Well, yeah. Which one? Uh, I was one of the, of course, the elite there. Of course, uh -huh. Marty calls it the. Men's division. <laughs> the men's department, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> in there. Go play uh, women Marines, and uh, Jasmine uh, Mowgli's one of them, okay. Yeah, you know, the Cal Marines and Navy are uh, uh, sister squadrons. I mean, yeah. sister of course they are. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Yeah. In there. Uh -huh. uh, tell us a little bit about that flight there for those people that don't know. It was an important test of... Uh, techniques, and more importantly, your spacesuit, Winston. Yeah, on the, this particular mission... Wait a minute, this is... Uh, I think that's 87. That's 87. I, may, I may have grabbed the Yeah, this is 87, my so, first flight. Yeah. I, I couldn't the, find uh, it in 72 of you in uh, Spacewalk. Yeah, that should be. Anyway, but anyway I, on this particular mission, what I'm doing there, that big square thing on my in front of my hands, that big cube, is a mock-up of a space station battery. 
and uh, this is the early batteries. That thing weighs over 400 pounds here on Earth. Mm -hmm. And what I did on this test was practice undocking, seating, and redocking that battery. The battery was launched on the the sill, the side of the shuttle. And while in orbit, I actually took tools, unbolted it, lifted it up, 425 pounds, I think it was, because it floats in orbit. And uh, I'm trying to think. Hmm. It's a second flag of first flight. Well, I tell you, all run together now. No, I, can't I, can't remember, remember, I can't remember who was. It's 72. But... It's 72, so it must have been Leroy on the other end of the crane. Yeah, they've they got you the near there, but you, he had the stripes probably. No, 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 that's me there. Oh, okay. Like, it's me, in the, but I can't remember who was operating the crane. Uh -oh. I think this was 87 and Takao was operating the crane. But anyway, that battery weighed 425 pounds. I, li I unbolted it, lifted it up out of its guides, actually docked it onto the crane, fastened it down. And then the crane was maneuvered through its paces. We wanted to see if the crane could move that large mass around in space. Remember, the crane would not on, would not even stand up under its own weight on Earth. Hmm. But in space, it was expected to move up to 600 pounds of mass. The battery weighed over 400 pounds. I put it on the crane, and the crane operator moved it through a, 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 its paces to determine how well it worked. And then at the end of that test, I removed the 400-plus pound battery, redocked it, and torqued it down. Mm -hmm. So things that... Uh, that we do in space maybe be somewhat routine here become very very difficult and very important in orbit and mm -hmm. that's what we were doing in that techniques for the international space station absolutely i know you yeah. can't have like the word regret mm -hmm. but do you wish you had been like a a decade later and gone to the ISS instead of all your no, missions were more no. of uh, that period when we were yeah. before we built it. Yeah, in fact, uh, I could have stayed and would have had an ISS mission. You know, there was no no reason for me to to leave. I left at the time when I I was ready to to change. The ISS is is a, a great asset, and and uh, I did not have the necessary desire to go spend six months uh, in in orbit. I've been yeah. in orbit. I again something new and different for me would be the moon. I like okay. the moon. Yeah. Yeah, dude. On seventy two, uh, you were testing a spacesuit and yes. and and and, yeah. and put in the, the supposedly the coldest yes. that, that any astronaut's mm -hmm. been exposed mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. right? Yes, the suit was modified to handle the super cold temperatures uh, of the location where we were going to build space station. They modified to handle those cold temperatures, and one of my jobs was to test its ability to keep us warm. So during a night pass, I anchored my boots in the foot restraints. They kept me, I was standing still. They rotated me towards deep space, and during a night pass, uh, I activated the different uh, systems and devices on my suit and then gave them a running uh, commentary and rating on how well the suit worked. And it, worked, it did work well. Did you feel cold suit. or in certain I could, parts I could, of your I body? Like... Be, at the end of the 45-minute dark period, I could begin to feel just a little bit of cold into my suit, but not bad. I had heated gloves, early uh -huh. days of battery-powered gloves and a, a pi bypass system on my liquid cooling and ventilation garment. So just a little bit of chill, but remember I was standing still too. The right. other part of it, normally you'd be working and you right. build up some way of heat load. Mm -hmm. But I was never uncomfortable and never to the point where I was incapacitated anyway. Even though the calculated temperature out around me was minus 104 degrees, I believe. Wow, I was going to ask like you what the environment yeah, was one, like. Minus yeah. 104 degrees. And, mm -hmm. uh, and a pioneering of what is being done almost routinely, the spacewalks once or twice a month on the International Space oh, Station. Yeah. They're doing so many of them nowadays. Uh, yeah, yes. that, you've lost track of them there. Marty, mm -hmm. question for Mr. Winston Scott. Yeah, more or less a question in the comment. Uh, Gary Folsom says, Winston Scott has flown every helicopter that the Navy had in service. Is that so? Not every helicopter, but I've flown quite a few. I did. I flew the... 57, the jet range of the Huey. I've flown H-53 uh, in the Navy. I have not flown the 46, though, H-46. So, yeah, I've flown quite a few helicopters and thoroughly enjoy that. That is some fun flying and challenging flying. Yeah, that's Absolutely. some, that, that's some uh, uh, Brainiac yeah. work stuff there. Yeah. Uh, Doug Forrest is watching. A comment today, Tom Usiak. Dave Stangy's up in Michigan, Winston, enjoying this. He's been with us all uh, almost all of our episodes. Rick Horner's watching. Thanks mm -hmm. for the question, Gary mm -hmm. Folsom. Marlies Kozrowski's watching. Uh, 
I think they're in the Ukraine. Ah, fantastic. Uh, Jane Hodge says hi. Yeah, hi, hi Jane. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Danny, Danny Noah mm-hmm. is watching. Tammy uh, McClug Miller. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she goes out there and gets autographs all yes. the time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Daniel D25 is watching. Okay. Uh, we had a great show with Hazel Banks yesterday, mm-hmm. and Hayes mm-hmm. is watching. Yes. I had a lot yeah. of great comments. She was an fantastic. Apollo Air secretary. Uh-huh. I, I know the name. I don't think I've yeah. met Hazel, but I certainly know her well, name. we got to get yeah. you in front of Hazel. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Space monkeys watching robert laws up in dundee scotland okay <laughs> enjoying his evening cocktail uh bill uh, whiting's up back home uh, in michigan uh, uh connie mcdaniel's watching uh, old hazel there uh carrie fink cynthia uh, rossi john darlington good to see you on there john and gary gerald is a, a vidalia onion grower uh, up in, in uh, georgia That's yeah, right. yeah yeah 18 counties can grow mm-hmm. can say they have Vidalias, mm-hmm. he told me. Uh, I know they have the Vidalias and, up there. I know it's 18 counties, but yeah. And uh, next week, it. Gary's going to do a program with mm-hmm. us about mm-hmm. farming and GPS and mm-hmm. satellites mm-hmm. revolutionizing farming. Absolutely. By making a better yield and, and more accurate stuff That's like right. that. So. That's right. Uh, uh, a benefit from our space program that many people don't realize. Yeah, so many benefits no, space. Your program. your food is definitely mm-hmm. now tied in mm-hmm. tied into mm-hmm. outer space up there. Right. Uh, we're gonna, we're enjoying here with Winston Scott, getting towards the end of our conversation with you. Hope you're enjoying absolutely uh, uh, our little visit here. And Ken, uh, before you you go on, sure. somebody uh, something was said about the U- Ukraine just a moment ago. Yeah, we're here. Let's and, look at uh, the Ukrainian aspect. Yeah, sir. yeah. On my second line, yeah, here's Kevin. Yeah, Leonid Kadinyuk, uh, the gentleman, the second in the, in the back, on to the right of the screen, to the right of K.C. Chavla there, it was a Soviet Union cosmonaut, and when the Soviet Union dissolved, he became oh. Ukrainian cosmonaut, flew with us in space here on 87. Now, uh, uh he, he passed away, unfortunately, a few years ago, so he doesn't know what's going on in Ukraine right now. Oh, my. But, uh, but we had a great time with... Uh, with uh, General Leonid Kadenia, they're flying with us on. Uh, you got Kriegel, Lindsay's your your uh, pilot right. there. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, as Lindsay's first flight, did you and uh, first flight, you and Kriegel, right. the commander, were the only experienced ones. Yeah, right, we were the veterans. Uh, uh, Casey, Kapona Chala, yeah, uh, Dow, and uh, and uh, Leonid Kadenia, yeah, Kadenia. Yeah. On there, mm-hmm. and on this mission that he really talks about in the book really well, uh, you and Dow re- literally grabbed a satellite yeah. unplanned yeah. Yeah, tell, tell us a little about that uh, you know you know is amazing how you write about here mm-hmm. is the uh the amount of work that the shuttle did yes. to move around mm-hmm. and kriegel's yes. there yeah. piloting this thing yeah I, and I I, I I i i ask is there any other mission where that where a pilot did so much work to try to to yeah, move well, you around. Well, every mission is different, of course, but this one was unique because we did have to do that satellite capture, and we had to maneuver the the uh, shuttle into such a position that uh, Takao and I could manually grab that satellite. We had to be careful where we could touch it because it had sharp edges, and there's certain places you don't want to touch the because it you could cut your glove. And, uh, but anyway, long story short, is this 3,000-pound satellite malfunctioned in orbit and developed a spin, a very, very slow spin. And even though the spin was slow, because it was spinning, we couldn't retrieve it with the arm. Therefore, long story short, is it was decided to cow and I would try to do a manual capture of that satellite. What I found interesting about the story, Winston, mm-hmm. was the communication. Yes. And yes. you kept emphasizing in your book there, you yes. were the lead communicator. Yes. Mm-hmm. And to mm-hmm. the, the commander mm-hmm. my, or, or the ship. But mm-hmm. uh, tell us why how, you you devised this on the fly. Well, and we, how important we, that we, was. We I did. understand when we I did. say up, I mean exactly. This is up. Exactly. Not, well, communications are challenging anyway. But when you go to space, they're they're more challenging. And when you fly with international astronauts, that adds another element of challenge. And again, Takao was on his first space flight. His English is outstanding. But it, English is a second language, so I had to we practice and rehearse what we were going to say so that would would not be confusion. Also in space, uh, we had to decide because you can't just say, for example, move the shuttle up. Well, up is relative in yeah. space because if the shuttle is upside down, then up may be that way, or the shuttle is this way, up may be that way. So we had to define up, down, right, left, rotate 
port and starboard and so on. And that became the terminology. And we literally had rehearsals inside the shuttle with terminology to ensure that everybody was mm. in sync. So uh, Kevin and Steve actually flew the initial rendezvous up to the satellite. And then I took over and was able to direct or guide them into where the position the shuttle, how to rotate the shuttle and move us up, down, back, forward, port, starboard, and, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, I found that Very fascinating. Another fascinating yeah. part of your little book here is he takes you on a flight yeah. by himself in the T-38 going from Kennedy Space Center to Houston, <laughs> your routine, yeah. uh, 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 you know, shuttle, uh, to uh, your routine trip, I'm trying yes. to say, yes. uh, that people uh, go into work mm -hmm. like a, a subway on there. And uh, very impressed with Winston is doing mathematical calculations of his fuel and distance in his head mm -hmm. to make sure the computer's accurate. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that's a normal and part of our training as uh, military aviators. Uh, so, and then uh, I carry that over to the T-38, of course. And the same thing in the shuttle. We're, you're always backing the computers up to be sure that what they're telling you is accurate. Uh, so when we perform a burn in orbit, for example, we sort of back the burn up. We know how much uh, of a burn, uh, what length of time is going to give you what increase in altitude and mm -hmm. so on. So the computers are doing the calculations. We're always backing them up because computers can make mistakes. And we yeah, want to be okay. sure what they're giving us is, is accurate. <sighs> Well, uh, very, very beautiful book. Uh, uh, Winston, I really told you that, you know, uh, it's really uh, different from, from a lot of astronomy or uh, astronaut books on there. I uh, think in that particular story, too, when, when, I, when I'm flying the T-38, I'm doing the calculation. Uh -huh. I believe the reflection was back to Mr. Clark, Mr. Franklin Clark. Yes. That taught advanced uh, arithmetic and in elementary school right right and i can remember one day in elementary school i i made an offhanded remark to mr clark that i want to have arithmetic let's go play softball yeah and mr clark responded by oh no 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 we we got to have arithmetic and then you say it again we've got, got to, to have, have arithmetic. arithmetic and then 40 something years later that phrase is still in my mind right. we've got to have arithmetic and, and he laid the foundation of course for my being able to do the math calculations in my head as i'm flying the airplane well, that's what I like about the book is it's not from point A to point B. He intersperses his life stories in with your missions, mm -hmm. and and uh, the, that's uh, that remind that's why I like it so much. Is it's not from point A to B. I grew up here, and then I went to school here, and then <laughs> I did that. It's all interwoven in there very well. Very. Yeah. Thank very you. very uh, fun read. I uh, hope we sell some for you. But what I have one question. Who is your fashion designer? <laughs> and, and what is going those, on here? Those are uh, ugly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's a real picture taken from Columbia's mid-deck. Those are our lucky shirts. Lucky. And uh, as I like to tell, though, and this is a true story, those are lucky shirts. Uh, everybody on the crew bought one. That is the second ugliest shirt we could find in the Land's End shirt catalog. Oh, really? okay. True story. <laughs> and the other part that's really true is that the reason we bought the second ugliest is because the ugliest shirt in the catalog was sold out. That's right, sold oh, out. Wow. So we got the second <laughs> ugliest shirt in the catalog. We took them into orbit with us, and we call those our, our lucky shirts. So we had a good, successful mission. Tradition? We, we go, oh, no, no, yeah. that's just something we know. Not oh, a tradition, okay. just we, this... This crew did something a little, little different. We had a lot of fun in space uh, and on Earth here, Winston. Do you we do. Uh, still stay in touch with some of these astronauts? We do, we yeah. Are we going to see some of them uh, at the astronaut encounter? Are you hitting your buddies up? Uh, yeah, you will. Let's see. Well, Brian Duffy was just here. Yes, he was. Brian, Brian was, was here just a day or yep. so ago. Yep. And... Um, Brian does a great the, talk. Well, in fact, Brian talks about each crew member, right? In, uh, yeah. this, uh, in there, which is really neat. That, Brian was a great commander. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I can mm -hmm. tell he's mm -hmm. uh, twice a pilot, then twice a commander. Yeah, absolutely, uh, in there. Yeah, uh, I haven't. Uh, love to have Dan yeah, Barry. We love that. I haven't okay. seen Dan in a long time. Koichi will be here for an upcoming launch pretty soon. Yes, August twenty first. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen Leroy in a while. A lot of these people I haven't seen since before COVID. Uh -huh. So when we get together this year, maybe for a reunion or whatever, I'll see. Some well, episodes. we might see Winston on the interstate. Yeah. Right there. Okay. <laughs> I blocked your license out, so no safety ah, control. Right. Uh, there and there. Yeah. But uh, a Top Gun Navy uh, captain, uh, you still like speed. Huh? All right. Well, I enjoy my... I, you know, I'm, 
I'm a tame driver these days. Yeah. I I enjoy my all my, good looks. Huh? I enjoy my all vote. about the eye candy. Yeah, man. absolutely. I, I'm using the right lane with the with the music going and the air conditioning going on and uh, enjoying yeah. my bet. Yeah. Well, Winston, we've certainly yeah. enjoyed be, you uh, taking your time after another busy day to, to, to keep everybody staying curious here. My Is there something you'd like to? Say to our audience out there that uh, well, I asked you, would you like to let me know? The, the only thing I'd, I'd like to say is, is thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and visiting with us today. I can't see you, of course, but I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, this little discussion. And I hope you folks will come on out to Kennedy Space Center and visit with us. It is a tremendous place to visit. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. For those who have not been, you've got to do mm -hmm. it. For those who have not been in a while, come on back because we're always changing, always adding. Adding, always updating and doing something new and the last thing i'll say about the visitor complex is that it's not a museum where you go see dead stuff hmm. when you go to ksc visit home that you do stuff that's right it's hands on you climb in you get shake rattled and rolled and you just steam have, educators are doing Absolutely. science out on the street they're doing science on the street actually conducting real science yeah. experiments right there and the kids can get involved and the adults can get involved or, just a fun place to visit. Well, Winston, we wish you a yeah, great uh, after career there in you. retirement there. I thank know it's you. in Thanks good so hands much. with <laughs> you there. We look forward uh, to uh, seeing some of the more f uh, astronauts that we haven't seen out there. But we support it, and we hope that you all support it. So, folks, this is Mr. Winston Scott. Uh, my privilege to know him like this and him be on Stay Curious. Uh, and, uh, again, uh, we appreciate all that you do for, for our, our whole Brevard County here. Because, well, like we say... Well, I've been here five years, Winston, and, and it almost gets my skin crawling when I think about you are sitting in the birthplace of yes. the American Space Age, yes, absolutely. and we are in the delivery room in Brevard yeah. County here. Yes, we, yes, we are. So, absolutely. Uh, uh, we'll, keep, well, thanks again. All right, my Thank friend. You. Uh, Next, uh, all right, we're going to kick off Thursday with the shuttles of the month of August. There they are, Winston. Nine right. beautiful yes, shuttles indeed. launched in the yeah. month of August. Yeah. Uh, one of them was launched today, STS-43, mm -hmm. that celebrated the Mercury mission with our good friend uh, uh, Mike Baker on it, as oh, yeah. well as yes. Jim Adamson was mm -hmm. on that flight. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about those tomorrow to help you stay mm -hmm. curious. And then Friday, future Fridays, we're going to look at a moon probe that's going to land on the moon that um, India has sent. Yes, that's there. right. So, uh, Winston, thanks again, Marty, and other flawless Streamlabs. To all of you, thank you so much for supporting the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. I hope to see you again to bridge the space between us.